looking at something. Hit the button. It's, it's, it's hitting. Bing bong. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, Mike. Week four, little bash chatter. Uh, we are going to we're going to do things a little bit differently to hopefully get a little bit more focused on this podcast. Uh, we're going to first off just kick sexy pats off. So makes <laughs> sense. We get out. Please leave, sir. Yeah. So rather than rambling through our matchups, what we're going to do is pick a couple like key players in our matchups that we think are going to you know turn the tide. A little bit, uh, but before we do that, I want to say this episode is brought to us by, it's brought to you by Pristine Auction, and they've been so kind as to give us this beautiful matte orange Super Bowl oh, signed, oh yeah, don't, you just made the value of that go down. made it skyrocket. It's disgusting. Value just skyrocket. Greasy fingerprints off of it, your pandons eating ass fingerprints off there. Uh, Super Bowl, LVI, signed helmet by Odell Beckham Jr., it is available for free if you sign up on Pristine Auction with the promo code BDGE. You don't even got to put money down right now, but they'll give you $10 towards your first purchase. They've got memorabilia from every sport, every single player. Anything you want for your man or woman cave is on there. You'll get $10 with promo code BDGE. The link is down below. If you sign up with our promo code, you are automatically entered into the raffle to win this helmet. Signed by ODB, Odell Beckham. That was, sounded weird calling him ODB. That was ODB. so disrespectful. It's OBJ. Yeah. I, uh, I know. But Some yeah. people call him ODB, though. Not yeah. that it's That's like, Oh, dirty bastard. I know. I know. That's why it <laughs> felt hey, disrespectful as soon yeah. as I said it. Uh, yeah, go sign up on Pristine Auction. Automatically entered into this free raffle giveaway. We're doing one of these a month, so go hit it. Uh, let's talk some fantasy football, sexual Judge Patterson. I don't like to. I don't I'm, think you would either. I'm done with it. You're sad. Since, yeah, I'm 0-3. I, I didn't even qualify for the bottom 25 this week somehow. I'm shocked. I think Snacks was in there. Yeah, Snacks. Made it. <laughs> yeah, you go. Snacks. I'm beating and, Snacks. Uh, and Cali Dog. Yeah. Mr. Uh, Yannick. But oh, I mean, Jan, Jan's in there? It's an elite I crowd. I believe so. Holy right? shit, two I, family members? I'm going off yeah. of what I was told yeah, by he, Sexy he's in there. Yeah. All right, don't lie to me. I'm not lying. Well, I'm projected to win, but I feel like I've got like a 10% chance to win. Uh, he's got a very solid lineup, and I'm worried mainly about the Kirk Cousins, Justin Jefferson stack. He's got, they're, they're going up against the Saints in London. I think that is like the key duo for him this week. If they bust, that's my only chance of winning. They're probably going to end up busting. I'm going to be happy starting at 12 or 1, and then my team's just all going to suck, and I'm still going to lose. Um but also, I've got Christian McCaffrey playing, and he might not play. So I might not have him play. I was going to get to that a little later, but you brought it up, so let's just do it now. Do we do we think he's going to play? Because I'm playing against him, so that was kind of one of my, you know, I'm feeling good if he doesn't play. I think he's good. I think, I think we would have heard more about it if he wasn't going to play, if yeah. that was a real yeah. risk. Is that like actually, is, did he just say that? Because I thought it was just like he was on the injury report, but it wasn't like anything I think seriousness. McCaffrey just chills on that, like, edge of being – hurt like oh he's just always questionable but it's christian mccaffrey i literally think like wednesday injury reports are completely useless i I think they're useful if the person missed the week before if they missed the entire week before like didn't play and then they're still not limited at practice by like wednesday or thursday you've got problems but we see so many veterans especially this year just not playing at all on wednesday practice i think a lot of it's just veteran rest yeah yeah we'll see we'll see how he practices the rest of the week um but honestly like i don't expect my team to perform well so it's really just about if the other guy's team performs well i like he brought up that that kirk cousins justin jefferson staff because i'm looking at uh jefferson they haven't been great yeah, yeah week one awesome week two and three were little i mean week two not great 7.8 points and week three i mean shit against the lions they got two we got three points yeah 2.9 points so he's either he stinks or he's due for, you know, his big Justin In London, Jefferson you never game. know. I almost feel like Jefferson's one of those dudes where, like, bright lights come on and he, you know, he, he balls out. Like, he I wants the those, world to see him. Those London games are always full of some excitement, too. Or terrible. No, I think we always think that. I think you always go into thinking the London games stink, but the NFL wants to provide a good product for London. They want them to, you know, become fans of the NFL, so they give them exciting it's games. It's kind of sad that, like, Jacksonville finally is good, and now they're not the fucking <laughs> yeah. London game, you know? Like, they're not London. They're, they're always going to be London team. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, regardless, like, you're starting fucking Justin Jefferson if he's in your lineup. A little bit of a tough matchup versus Lattimore. Like, the Saints pasty is, yeah. is pretty nice right now, so eh, it could go either way. I think Jefferson is good enough. He'll be fine. Kirk and Jefferson can certainly, um, certainly ball out. What about your team? What do you think is, like, the difference maker? I mean, honestly... Just any of these running backs. <laughs> Getting any of these running backs back to the way they were last year or just what their hype was expected to be. So McCaffrey, can he finally get involved in the receiving game? Eckler, is his team going to be good again? The, the Chargers are a mess. And Javante Williams has 
definitely underperformed. I have like very little confidence in Eckler and Javante. This going to go yeah. out of those three running backs. Who do you feel uh, most comfortable with going forward? Has to be C Mac, right? Yeah. Is it? I feel like it's Javante. I mean, really? Yeah. He's know. still getting like C-Mac touches still, and like C Mac still has a safe floor. It's just his ceiling is nowhere close to what it used to be. Javante. Like he, he's he's only gone over ten fantasy points once. Yeah, I feel like his floor is not that high, and is like the the fact that Denver is. I think he has room to grow though. Versus like C Mac, we've for seen sure. what he can do for sure. But I don't think he's ever gonna we're gonna see those C Mac days again. Like not with Baker Mayfield on the, the field, not with the way the Panthers have been playing. Uh, I just think the most upside is still Javante and m- maybe Eckler. Probably I probably put Eckler too. Bro, that's crazy. Nah, C Mac has the least upside. Yeah, that's insanity, animal. I will say though, Javante, I do think he's looking the best just because with how bad the Denver offense has been overall. Yeah. He's still like, he's not killing you in your lineup. He's obviously not like producing the way you wanted to when you drafted him, but he fumbled a goal line touchdown too. Right. So like he should have yeah. had a, a better game that game. If the offense goes back to what we kind of projected it to be, which it should, it's not going to be this garbage forever. If they get 10% better, you know, right. Javante will get 10% better. I think Javante, uh, I'm not really worried about him. Yeah. He's looked really good. Just the Broncos offense is horrible. Right. They had like nine, three and outs. That's what I'm saying. Like, I think the Broncos offense can get better. I don't see the Panthers offense getting any better. And the Chargers offense is probably gonna be fine. As long as Herbert's fine. That's, that's the thing there. Like if Herbert's fine, offense is fine. But if Herbert's not fine, then yeah, I'm, I'm losing all faith in that and faith in Eckler too. Yeah. Only if you, and if you look at Eckler's stats, he is getting receptions. He has four, nine, eight in his three games. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The eight yes, last game was like they were down 25, though, and it was legit like five dump-offs on the last drive. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it wasn't like it wasn't like good usage. In the same way that like with Travis Etienne, we're like, oh, 16 touches, but like also they came when they yeah. were up like 25 fucking points. So hard to get predictive. It's like obviously it's disappointing because Eckler heard a stat somewhere, I think, today that was like uh, – they have literally one goal line carry on the year. It went to Michelle. They have two carries inside the 10. One went to Michelle. One went to um, Josh Kelly. Damn. Damn. Yeah, so the Ecker has, like, no involvement anywhere near the, the end zone, unfortunately. They all got the matchup this week, though. Some soft defenses. Yeah, Arizona, three of them. Houston, and then the Raiders. the Raiders. So if none of them perform again this week, then I'm quitting the bash. <laughs> That's yeah. it, yeah. I mean, <laughs> you need to win badly. Sell so. your team. I mean, you're not you're not one of the rare guys. You can sell True. it. We'll allow it. I'll sell it one year. Just like no one's one, buying, no one's buying, buying an own for bullshit team. ass team. <laughs> yeah, I mean, speaking of Herbert in that LA offense, I have I have a lot of Justin Herbert. He was my first overall pick in in the bash right now, so I have a lot hanging on him. My QBs are are a mess right now because I have Mac Jones, Joe Flacco, Zach Wilson. So whoever the Jets and Brian Hoyer. So I choose between the Jets starting quarterback and the New England starting quarterback. That's really all I have to go off of. I I would say the one. Um, conundrum I'm in a little bit is Zay Jones and uh Alan Lazard so Lazard's like catching touchdown passes I targets yeah I think Romeo Dobbs is for sure the guy there Zay Jones is I feel like he's got a nice floor but he doesn't really have a lot of upside I feel like Lazard on a week-by-week basis has a little bit more upside than he does for sure so I I don't know if they're like difference makers because I don't know if my team is he has Dobbs on his team and he has him on his bench right now under Boyd and under Samuel which I think is a mistake. Uh, Dobbs and the Patriots pass defense has actually surprisingly been like terrible, which is not something we are used to. I think they're like bottom five right now, according to like PFF coverage grading. So I think if he gets Dobbs into his lineup, could be a schlacking because he has some really good uh, running backs. He has Jonathan Taylor. If Alvin Kamara gets going, CD Lamb, T Higgins, Mike Williams. Damn, um, he's got a good team. He's got a good team. Yeah. Um, he has Jared Goff as his QB, but he kind of hit on that, I guess. Hawkinson stinks at tight end. But yeah, I think the difference makers for this game are going to be those flex spots like Lazard, Zay Jones, and then he's got to choose between. I guess, would you would you start um, Dobbs over Tyler Boyd? Yeah. You do, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like if he throws Dobbs in the spot with Thursday Tyler night, Boyd, yeah. and, and like his team looks really good. Yeah. I agree. Fuck. <laughs> yeah, Dobbs is. Uh, I actually just wrapped up my rankings for this week, which are available on bge.co if you're a big dog member. And I put. I would you consider putting Hendo in there over both Lazard and Zay Jones? Acres getting all Henderson was stupid bad work last, now. Henderson yeah. got like five carries for like 15 yards last week. Like yeah. He was yeah. legit useless. Also, are they playing the Niners? Yeah, the Niners' run D has been. Oh no, their pass D has been fucking sick. I don't know about their run D. Let me check that out real quick. The run D's top five grades Is according to... Yeah. Is that through the season or 12 just 12 carries for 26 know. yards. It's horrible. All right, Javante Williams. <laughs> <laughs> Next up. Uh, yeah, they're number one in coverage grading right now, and they're number five in rush defense. So the Niners defense has actually been really fucking nice. 
I also think that I'm it could have just been we, we have that one outlier game against the Broncos who basically like served up the the softest offense to us that one week. Yeah, maybe. I think I mean they're above average defense regardless. Yeah. But I'm looking at the rank. I have Romeo Dobbs all the way up at wide receiver 26 right now. It's pretty high. It's very high. I'm I'm like a big I have him over Curtis Samuel, I have him over Brandon Cooks, I have him over Terry Garrett Wilson. Like, I think I think Dobbs is like, that was his breakout game, and I think he's here to stay. I have Lazard so all the way too. down at wide receiver 40. I think so. you're probably going to start him in every single league I have him. I don't think I'm going to be able to start him in E-Town get down. It's 10 man, so I have, like, Mike Evans, Mike Williams, Hollywood Brown, Cortland Sutton. If Herbert like, doesn't I, play, would you start him over Mike I, Williams? I mean, how does Herbert play last week and not this week? Well, I'm just saying. I don't know. Uh, yeah, if Herbert doesn't play, I, I probably sit Mike Williams, yeah. And Keenan Allen's probably back. But, <clears throat> I mean, Herbert's not going to not play after playing last week. I was looking at your opponent. He's got a very good team. Yeah, yeah, he does. Jeez, Alvin he's, Kamara though. Yeah, he's he's one and two. That was uh, Aaron was the one who traded into my league. That, well, Alvin Kamara is a guy that perch. I believe you have and I have. I got him, and like I'm gonna obviously start him, but I just I hate him. I hate <laughs> him so much right now. He doesn't. Get, he doesn't get the passes, man. I wonder. Like this is the first time that the Saints have like built out a real receiving core. It feels like. I mean, it's obviously a combination of James Winston. It's also a new offense without Shane, uh, Sean Payton, and now they have Alave. They have Michael Thomas back. I also think Michael Thomas might not play this week. He's missed two practices in a row, I believe, with a toe injury, which I feel like is a nice little boost for Kamara. But they're also using Ingram a little bit, like on the goal line too. So. I mean, it, it's all around just a lot of red flags for, for Kamara. I think the weekly ceiling is still there on any given basis, but, like, I, I, it's hard to rank him inside the top uh Yeah, so, like, I mean, it's not, like, anymore. a big deal, but, like, I moved Damian Pierce to my RB2 spot, and Kamara's a flex now. I've, I've demoted him down to the flex yeah, position. Yeah, 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 I demoted so his ass because, really I mean, I'm looking it, at right? my lineup here. I have too many running backs that suck and not enough wide receivers is my biggest problem. Right now, uh, on my team, it's between Jahan Dawson and Alan Lazard for, like, most worried about on my on my roster because my running backs are fine. Yeah, they suck, but I have enough of them. But my wide receivers, like, between DJ Moore sucking, I've already, like, pretty much wrote him off. Uh, but Jahan Dawson was a guy who, I, like, I believed in, and now I'm just, like, sort of losing uh, faith, hope. I'm not sure what it is. I just think Carson Wentz is about to implode even more. Yeah, I and mean, like, he might, but, like, I feel like you kind of have to expect this from Carson Wentz. Like, he's going to have down games, of, of course, and, like, Jahan Dotson's a rookie. He had two good games. He had the bad game, but he also had eight targets in that game. Yeah, so I'm saying eight targets and two catches, though. It was, like, eight, targets are cool, but are they, were these catchable targets? Were these even fucking anywhere? Near, like, I didn't watch the game. I, I All I saw was, you know, Jalen Hurts basically just blowing up, going, going nuts. Who are their commanders playing this week? They're playing Dallas, who has a good defense. They do. Good pass good, rush. Very yeah. good defense. So, yeah. like, I'm debating. I think I'm going to end up sitting I, I Jahan really Dotson. I really wouldn't be too worried about Dotson. I think I'm going to sit Jahan Dotson and put Matt Collins in. Obviously, Ooh. it's not, like, Interesting. sexy, but it's. I, I feel like you got I need to get something going here. I like that. Right? I, w- I would probably do it. Uh, that, even I if Hunter like Renfro plays. Thinking it. Like, Jahan Dotson, how has like, how he even done? I feel like he's gotten a couple touchdowns, but he hasn't. He was good the, the, the first two weeks. Yeah. yeah. He's got three receptions, four receptions, two receptions. So it's like. That offense is just spread. That That's the problem. There's so many people getting the ball in that offense. So if Harry they have Curtis, one bad week, it's like you're fucked. Antonio, yeah, between all the other guys Isn't there. The same thing going on in Vegas, though? Yeah, yeah. kind of. But yet, Matt Collins is the one getting the most targets. Yeah, so he, that's he what I'm going to do. most targets on that team. I'm going to swap so. Matt Collins for Jahan Dotson right now, live on the show. There's no chance he has more targets than Devontae Adams. I think Devontae had like oh, yeah, not, 18 not, the first week. Yeah, the first week. Yeah. I mean, the one who's really at expense here is Darren Waller. He's been awful yeah. this season. I don't think he's had a game with more than, like, fucking seven points. Yeah, he's been horrible. Yeah. yeah. So if Renfro's out, like, Derek Carr really clearly seems like he wants to throw the ball on the outside. I saw something from a, a Raiders beat reporter yesterday that was like, <laughs> man, I don't remember. I, I wish I could find it. I don't think I'm able to find it. But it was, it was talking about how they were, like, purposely – game planning specific like their passing offense was was being forced like they were running plays not to Devontae Adams like the first week they let him free flow and then they started implementing this game plan where it was like moving away from Devontae Adams and that's why his target plan uh, has his targets have been so down the last couple weeks but the beat reporter like on Tuesday's practice was like take whatever Devontae Adams's reception total is this week just take the over on it just gonna game plan him in yeah I forget what it was but it like it made a lot of sense given what we've seen from the Raiders offense the last couple weeks it just it doesn't make sense from the outside like why the Raiders would ever fucking do something like that but looking at how the production has kind of played itself out makes a little bit of sense I guess you should be worried about DJ Moore too I'm very worried about DJ Moore but I was worried about him last week so like I'm already over that I have moved on from DJ Moore I just accepted the fact that I have to start him and he sucks like it's gotta be him or Nico Collins yeah you have to start him that's what I'm saying like I have to start DJ Moore 
Yeah. It, so, that Panthers offense is just implo- – they're running like 50 plays a game. Well, this it's, is exactly why I don't fucking care for McCaffrey right now. Mm-hmm. But uh, as far as my opponent, um, I mean, his team looks pretty good. I'm not really too worried about anybody other than – Maybe Brandon Cooks against the Chargers. He can, you know, he's always a guy that can sneak something That's in there. Who you're most worried about, but no, no, no. <laughs> my, I would say uh, maybe, but the guy I'm probably most worried about is James Robinson because yeah. he's just having stud game after stud game after stud game. Uh, Luckily, he's got the Eagles this week. Yeah, but if you look, they really haven't, you know, done anything to stop the run. Like DeAndre Swift went wild on him week one. Week two, Dalvin Cook, who was slow, didn't have a great week. <laughs> exactly. So that's Not about it. And then <laughs> last, last week. Um, Antonio Gibson didn't do well, but from a fantasy standpoint, he had a decent game. So uh, James Robinson's a guy that I, I would worry about because they're just feeding him the rock, and he seems to find a way to bust out a 40-yard touchdown every game. It's not a bad offense either in Jacksonville. Yeah. I mean, they're feeling good too. Jacksonville's ready to, they're ready to be an NFL team. They're on a heater. Their O-line's looking good. I just feel like at this point, it's not even like about the defense. It's just like James Robinson has just defied yeah. every fucking – it doesn't matter who they're playing. I don't think just defense, starting yeah. James Robinson, James it takes, Robinson. It takes one play. You know, that's yeah. it. You take one play to rip off that 50-yard run, and that's it. It doesn't matter. It's a goat. Yeah, I mean, McCaffrey can drop a bomb on you. James Robinson can. Travis Kelsey can. I'm more worried about James Robinson than McCaffrey. I'm more worried about Damian Harris than McCaffrey. Shut up. Relax. You, you, you think that, but he's going to like get two or three stupid-ass touchdowns. I bet you Christian McCaffrey – Doubles Damian Harris to score this week. I'm playing against Green Bay. It's good. It's good defense that matters. It does. Matters a lot. You know, Brian Hoyer is the only name that matters in this fucking match. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. Damian Harris can have 15 carries. Yeah, for fucking 40 yards. Probably. Five at the goal line for three touchdowns. <laughs> yeah, Brian Hoyer is going to lead seven touchdown drives for sure. <laughs> More worried. He's about probably going to play better than fucking Mac Jones. Maybe <laughs> not a very <laughs> not a very. High Brian Hoyer is going to come point. and be a stud for one game. You more worried about CMC or James Conner playing against each other? Who has the better day? Has James Conner done fucking anything this year? I feel like he, he really had a touchdown in week one and has like 30 it. yards a game after that. He's averaging like three yards a carry. Like he's bad this uh, year. I mean, he's been bad, but yeah. like that. that and the problem, was, well, I think the problem was like the Cardinals offense had been good enough where he was getting fucking 14 goal line carries every other week. Yes. But, yeah. But now their offense is horrible. He was never a big yard guy last year. He was all about the touchdowns. Didn't he have like 12 touchdowns? Yeah. I think he had like 18 Fif- last 15 year. To- no, 18 Fif- total touchdowns. Yeah. yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, and I mean that, that was that was obviously not going to happen again. But if the Cardinals' offense was good, then yeah, he could still score like that, twelve. What's that or famous word? Regression. Never heard of it. Never heard regression. of regression. Yeah, he's actually almost got more receiving yards than rush yards. Yeah, All right, Tony. no, this year's fucked up. What do you got? I'm actually feeling pretty solid about my matchup. Oh, you're when gonna I, lose. Hey, let me let me explain myself here. All right, um, it's a little bit with I, I think my guys are set up well, and I think my opponent is set up not great. Uh, starting with my team, we talked a little bit about Kamara. Javante Williams, both of them got nice matchups. Do we think that? Yes, you should uh, get Michael Carter out of your lineup. <laughs> well, I don't really have what that. About, what about your boy Noah Brown, if Michael Gallup doesn't play? If Michael Gallup doesn't play, I'm 100% going to put Noah Brown in there. The dude's just been a stud. Yeah. But uh, real quickly, if Andy Dalton ends up being the starter for the Saints, because Winston didn't practice today, he's kind of on that same track as Michael Thomas, do we think that helps Kamara being that, like, it's not – Yes. As much of a fucking and chucking approach with Jameis Winston. I kind of do. Sure. Yeah. yeah. So he's more likely to check down. Right. So I'm kind of I'm kind of feeling Alvin Kamara this week. I think this might be his time in London. Stars breaking out. I'll take Michael Carter out of my lineup. I agree. That Maybe. could be like a double bonus for you too, because your opponent has a lot of it. That's that's the other part I was going to bring up. I forgot about that. Yeah. Um, obviously, with Winston not airing it out. 300 pretend potential yards to Chris Olave this week. Olave might be a uh, little little down, maybe not get as many targets as he normally does. Um, well, Michael Thomas might be out. Yeah, that's true. That hmm. doesn't help. So your entire uh, game is riding on if Jameis is going to play or not? No. Dude, you're playing. This, this <laughs> dude has Brian Hoyer that's and, what I'm and saying. Naeem Hines right. in his lineup. I'm, I'm, getting, I'm getting to there, right? Like Darrell Henderson. Seems, this, this guy's team is yeah, bad. Really bad. Right. This is why I'm feeling good. So, yeah. Sexy P, don't fucking doubt me. Don't be like, oh, you're going to fucking leave because I'm confident. No, I looked at the fucking numbers. I looked at the players. You know what I'm fucking doing here, Sexy P? Also, his top two players, Mahomes and Kelsey, going up against the box. Well, he's got Judy on the bench for some reason. On the, the, the Hines. defenses. I mean, the Broncos have been garbage, so. Yeah, but I feel like sense. you have to start Judy over Jerry, uh, over Naeem Hines. Yeah. Yeah, you do. Yeah, of course. But, the, I mean, yeah, like, he has three players that could legit put up two points this week. Like and, and and are not unlikely Dude, to do. I'm that. looking at this. I think he's gonna smoke Tony. Really? Why? What are you talking about? I think Rashad Bateman is gonna like catch a long one. Are you serious? Like Buffalo secondary is great, even yeah. with the even with the injuries but to the, them. Travis Kel. I mean, not Travis. Uh, Travis Etn probably isn't that big part of it. That big. Kelsey's gonna have 35. 
There's literally not a single player that scares me in this lineup besides right. besides even, the Casey. Even C D Lamb has been disappointing. Like Yeah, exactly. But he dropped like a wide I'm telling you, all these guys are gonna have their day their their days against you, right? Okay, now. well I can say the same thing about my team. Like we said, Kamara, fucking Javante Williams. Even da- is Dallas Goddard healthy? Yeah. Yeah, he's fine. Touchdown last okay. Week. Yeah, but then he left and never came back. We'll see what happens with Waddle tonight for you. That's what this will they'll be a good indicator. Also, what's going to kill me is if Herbert doesn't play because I have him stacked with Mike Will. I think he's going to play. Wait, why is there this talk of Herbert not yeah, playing? Like, he just he played. Play? Okay, not, just, not just that threw it won't. out there. I just started a little rumor, and it's just he starting did. to take people off. People are talking. The wheels are spinning. People are talking. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the dude, even he's going to play. He's going to play. But he's definitely banged up. He's definitely limited in some capacity. He could play two snaps and take a good shot to the ribs and be out. It feels like that. I hope it does. No, shut the fuck up. I mean, he took up. some big shots last week and was fine. It wasn't yeah. good, but he stayed on the field. Well, did you see the, before the show they did a whole breakdown of his new um, the, br- the brace, the flak jacket? Yeah, his flak jacket that they had that clipped to like his thing, and it so nah. basically the shit that he should have been wearing this whole time, but he wasn't. It's, thi- it's thick. It's big. Yeah, it's like what Cam Newton used to wear. It's got like the full thing, but it's attached, and there's like something in the front that like strapped down because they had to cover the front too. Well, Cam Newton was a horrendous passer. I wonder if that was the reason why. I think he was always a on his trajectory passer. to become Cam Newton. People are talking. <laughs> People are talking. <laughs> Such a good line. <laughs> I mean, the fact that he has Brian Horan in his lineup, it almost feels like you that's just ins- get... Yeah. He's going to score four points. That's detrimental to him. <laughs> I'm telling yeah. you, don't... Yeah. Brian Horan probably going to have nine points, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Less. So I'll take the under. We're, we're all in agreement that his team sucks, but then you guys are also well, going to be like, like, oh, he's going to smoke you. That's what I'm saying. No Damian Harris. No one Harris. That except he said that. Damian he Harris and Ramondre Stevenson are going to go by for six touchdowns. Six? Doug, if what? The, throughout the rest of the year? You just basically said Brian Horan is going to put up 40-plus points for the Patriots. Well, Bill Belichick Tom Brady. You think the Patriots are going to score 42 points. All right, listen, don't take everything so literally, all right? You got to throw out real numbers at me. Just four touchdowns, okay? That's all still ridiculous. Points. Yeah. Week one, they scored seven points. Week two, they scored 17 points. Last week, they did score 26, but the Ravens' defense might be yeah, worse. It's called progression. NFL. It's called growing. And they just lost getting their better starting every quarterback. Week. Any given Sunday. Except when you have Brian Hoyer. You don't know anything about football. Um, all right, so those are all the bash matchups. All right, let's put some prize pick squares together for the boys riding a, a hot, the hottest streak we've ever had. One win in a row. Let's it's go. a beautiful thing. If you guys want to ride with us, make sure that you use promo code BDGE. If it's your first time on prize picks, they're going to hit you with a 100% deposit match. What I'm looking at right now is Stefan Diggs against the Baltimore Ravens. They are at home. His line is 78 and a half. We're going to take the more on that. When I look back the last couple of weeks, one, the Ravens, I mean, their offense is putting up a lot of points and their defense, their passing defense is just not very good. They are letting number one receivers absolutely cook against them. Devontae Parker just went for a 150 spot. Bateman went for over hundred yards the week before that. Even Corey Davis got some, some work going in, in week one. So I think Diggs over 78 and a half is like pretty locked in. He's had two monster games last week. He was a little uh, off his game. Still ended up with like 75 yards. So I think... Him and Allen are just so zoned in at this point in the season together that it's 75 yards feels like an absolute baseline for him. And I think he just goes uh, a little bonkers. I think both these teams probably score, you know, like 28 points or so. Um, so love digs over 78 and a half receiving yards. I'm actually going to feed off yours. I'm going to go with Josh Allen more than 280 passing yards. He's hit this in his last five games. Coming off a little bit of a disappointing loss to a division rival, I think he's going to be zoned in for this one. Baltimore are going to be able to keep pace with them. This should be a shootout total. It's been bouncing in the low to mid 50s. It's it's Josh Allen. You want to bet on your studs, and you know when you go with the these four square plays, it's nice to incorporate a little correlation. You know, so you're not betting on four different scenarios to happen. We need we're condensing it down to Josh Allen digs. Lock it in. Good players on good offenses. All right, I'm going to continue with a good player or a future good player, Traylon Burks. Look, last week he ran a route on 96.4% of the Titans dropbacks in week three, the Ooh. highest rate for a Titans player in a single game this season. And you know what his line is? Don't let Animal heat up. <laughs> his line is 35 and a half for receiving yards. I'm taking the more on this because he's going to have more than 35 and a half. He has had more in week one and two. Last week was a little bit of a stinker week, and that's going to happen. It's going to happen for rookies plenty of times. But you know what? Not in a division game, not against the Colts. Colts secondary has been terrible. Um, it's one of my favorite squares of the week, actually. I really like Traylon Burks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's he's going to crush this. He's going to go for over 50. Uh, you also got Traylon Burks. The, you got to love the reports coming out. That he's going to get more involved? Yeah. And that he took uh, the highest – he had the highest rate for a Titans player in a single game this season? 
I mean, not yeah, that one too. But it was, it was more like the squeaky wheel is probably getting the grease this week. Yeah, Robert Woods is dead. There's no one else there. It's all Traylon Burks. Austin Hooper, dead. Dead. I'm going to go with Devonta Smith, more than 57 and a half receiving yards. Look, everyone still has week one in their minds where Devonta Smith had zero receptions. I'm not going to lie. I, d- I do too. Like, yeah. That week one is so impactful. You think about it, and even for Damian, like a dude like Damian Pierce coming off 20 carries and a touchdown, I'm still like, I don't know if he's like the guy guy yeah. there, you know, but you're right. But if you look at the last two games, he has more receptions and targets than A.J. Brown. They are a clear 1A, 1B. Both of them are great players. They're both going to get their targets and their receptions and their yards. Devonta Smith, his line is 15 yards less than A.J. Brown. So I really like Devonta Smith to go over 57 and a half. He's coming off a monster game. Eight for one sixty nine and a tud Jacksonville, not the best. Uh, actually, their defense actually has been pretty their, good. Their run D has been like really, really yeah. good. Yeah, they have pretty good corners too, right? Yeah, they're just a good. Their defense is stellar this yeah. year. But the Eagles' offense is just absolutely elite. I don't think Jacksonville is going to be able to keep up with them. This game could be pretty high scoring too. So I like Devonta Smith to easily go over fifty seven and a half. All right, so we've got Diggs more than 78 and a half trail on Burks more than 35 and a half Josh Allen more than 280.5 and Devonta Smith more than 57.5 I'm gonna throw I'm gonna throw a Benji on it for a thousand bucks we're gonna yeah. power play this shit I have faith absolutely. in you boys I have absolute faith in you boys ride this with us use promo code BDGE when you first deposit if it's your first time on there put down 20 they'll give you 40 to play with put that 40 on this bad boy and win yourself four hundred dollars four hundred dollars we don't flex our traps we power them Straight powering these traps. <clears throat> Fucking sore as shit. You don't make a sound. No one, no one will know you're flexing. <laughs> <laughs> you're just, you. what are you doing? You want to know why you're sick? Because <clears throat> shit like that. Uh, we'll be back on Monday for a live stream. We'll be back on Monday for a live stream. I'll be live on the YouTube channels for uh, Q and Assault on Saturday. I think I'm going to do, so Q and Assault is for our big dog members. Again, BDG. BDGE.co will get you Q and Assault. It'll get you our weekly rankings, our waiver wire rankings, all that sheesh. Sunday, I'm going to go live to the public. I'm going to let you yell your sit starts at me uh, before game time, maybe 11 a.m., 11.30 a.m. We'll see what we get into on Saturday night. But I'll be here pulling up. I think I'm going to do a call-in show, Animal. Let's put that together. Yeah, I can uh, help set that up very easily. Love to see it. Animal with the stats today. Animal with the call-in help today. Animal with it all. Make sure you hit the thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. And, uh, yeah, we'll see you this weekend. Good luck, beaches.